I'm back online, yeah. Yeah, same. Hmm, what should we do? I don't know. This doesn't seem like it's going to be stable. Yeah, I don't think, I think it's going to stay windy for a while. Sazbon, thanks for the tier three sub. Holy shit, thank you. Yeah. For anyone watching, our internet is like a line of sight thing. It's really good yeah. most times, but it's extremely stormy in England right now. Um, so I think all the wind is like fucking up the connection a small bit. <sighs> I was so ready though. Me too. Oh, what says zero dropped frames now? What the fuck? Did your thing reset? I mean, because probably. probably because you went, yeah, it says for me zero as well because you went offline and back online. Yeah. So it restarts. Uh, I don't know what to do. Mm, yeah, I'm wondering if it'll. Because it already dropped twice now. It dropped in... three, three times for me. And two in like 20 minutes? Yeah. So that, yeah, that's bad. Oh, yeah, the storm is not that bad. We're not in danger in any way. It's no, just no, no. that the internet doesn't like it. It needs to be like pretty stable outside. Yeah. Um we'll we'll see if it keeps going like that. Right. That's only 30 mile an hour winds though. Hmm. It shouldn't be that bad. Should we just give it a go and if it drops again call it a night? Yeah. Titan. Thank you for the 500 bits. That sucks. Uh, yeah, let's give it a, let's give it an old shot of Rooney. Yeah. Do you have the game ready? Oh, yeah. Because I just see your beautiful face. Oh, baby. <laughs> You're about to see some Eldritch truth. Okay, I haven't accessed the DLC yet, actually. So it's time to go through Cathedral Ward. I can't see my game yet. Oh, I rented the wrong one. Fuck. I need to be Dinklebamp Jr. Not Grunkle Donk. Yes. Dinklebamp. It's <laughs> time for some big Dinkle energy. Ah, <clears throat> uh, oh. the wrong location. That's annoying. You went to Grand Cathedral instead of Cathedral Ward? No, I went to Odin's Chapel. I just didn't click far enough down the list. Um, did I access DLC? <laughs> it's so oh. weird when you say it like that. <laughs> Oh my god, I've been playing so much Sekiro now, this is weird. Yeah, I was worried about that, but Dang. I'm sure you'll get used to it. Bloodborne slow. Sekiro fast. Sekiro good. Bloodborne good. All good. Hey, Angie, good to see you. Pugpest, thank you for the tier one. And Sin Eater, thank you for the 100 bits. I'm just bits. running now to the Lauren, thank you for the 100 bits. I'm too lazy to load out and in. Babe, I think it's because my hype train. I think my hype train <laughs> broke our internet. Broke the internet. <laughs> it's too good. <laughs> <laughs> People have sunglasses on Dinklebap in my yeah. emotes now. <laughs> yeah, everyone! Dinklebap is now an emote, courtesy of Camilla. Uh, yeah, this way. Oh my god, it's weird how slow this game is. <laughs> yeah, you're so used to the other one now. Yeah. I'm still gonna kick some ass, don't worry. Can't keep me, Dinkle down. I fucking hate amygdalas now. I really hate them. Being stuck on them for so long in the chalice. Their children. <sighs> so much negative energy in me. Babe, curse the fiends and their children too. Yeah, I know, right? They're talking their about me. <laughs> and their children. Forever true. Who's even saying this? They're great at poetry. <sighs> How's BB? He's... And we went down again! Oh. Fuck. Oh, did I lose you again? Ah, no. fuck. <laughs> Internet, well, not again. Uh, that really sucks. I, it, it recovers after a second, though. Yeah, but if you're in the middle of fighting something. Yeah, that would be <clears throat> annoying. Hmm. Yeah, I guess. God, that really sucks. I really wanted to stream tonight. 
Yeah, sorry guys. I was so okay. ready. I was like all powered yeah. up. I was hype trained out. I, I spent all my energy in the first five seconds. <laughs> you want to try again tomorrow? Maybe? Uh, yeah, I think so. If you can. <clears throat> yeah, if I'm not recording with the guys. Yeah. I look so cool. <laughs> I am dinkled out. Look at this dinkle bamp. <laughs> Let me look at you. Wait. Oh, you're beastie. That's dinkle bamp. That's his face. <laughs> That's how beautiful he is. What's that outfit you're wearing? Um, Are you? Yeah. Hmm. Why am I wearing it? <sighs> well, that sucks, guys. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I'll do a bit more just chatting so we're not live for like <laughs> 30 minutes and then out. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll do that and then... Uh, We'll maybe try again soon. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll come downstairs in a bit then, babe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah, that fucking sucks. I wanna, I wanted to play. Man, sorry guys. There's nothing worse than like, promising that we're gonna do a thing and then getting all hyped up for it and tweeting it out and getting ready to stream. And then having it all fall apart 20 minutes in. We tried. But it seems like tonight's not our night. That's interesting to know, though, for future reference. I wonder if it's because we're both trying to stream and it's just a little too much. Because the internet I got installed, the, the way where our house is, is that it's a little hard to get to for, like, regular cabling and everything. So, and most places don't service this area. So we tried to get one installed before through a cable. I was going to pay for the extra cable length and things like that. And then they just never came back. It wouldn't have been as good as this. But then the new service is like, a, they put a thing on your roof basically. And it just beams a signal across to another thing. And it just bounces the signal all across the place. But it's basically like satellite internet without the satellite. Um, but the same sort of principle. So, whenever it's windy, the thing just shakes a little bit and it loses that kind of, like, peer-to-peer -peer connection. So... What can you do? I really wish it stayed stronger, though. Um... But the fact that it went down by doing almost nothing is very telling. Um, and it is very, very windy here today. I went out to get food and my bins were all blown over and my gate could barely open because of the wind. But I'll sit and chat for a little bit, at least, so I don't show up and it just immediately go away again. Uh, Septic Bubble, thank you for the thousand bits. You give a shout out to my daughter, Bailey, when I showed her she lost her mind. Thanks for that. That's really sweet. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for the thousand bits. And I hope you and Bailey are doing happy. Wind blows. <laughs> That's a good one, Welfare. I like that. At least they gave you some energy right at the beginning of the stream. You got something out of it. Some big dinkle energy. Um, external, thank you for the dollar. Uh, boss, thank you for the hundred bits. Lauren, thank you for the hundred bits. Uh, large boy, thank you for the fifteen bits. Morgan, thank you for the prime. Um, in my spare time, I've been playing some Sekiro again. Because I we played a lot of Dark Souls 3 together. I had given that game kind of a hard time when it came out because it wasn't as good as Dark Souls 1 or Bloodborne to me. And then when we went back and played it together, I had a new appreciation for the level design and the artistry and things in it. I still don't really like the color screen, color scheme for most of that game, but I like it a lot more than I did. And now, when Sekiro came out, I was like, visually amazing, artistically amazing, S sonically amazing, but gameplay, it was too repetitive for me and it was too limiting that you couldn't change what you wanted in your character second time through so there was no replay value in it really for me but we've been kind of craving it since we went to the game awards and we saw it win game of the year and playing so much bloodborne i was like i kind of want to go through all of them now and so i've been playing sekiro again and i'm so much better at it but it's fucking amazing i gave that game a little too hard a time when it came out as well uh hannah thank you for the hundred bits only just joined, I missed all the Bloodborne content. You didn't miss it. You, uh... Well, yeah, we finished the game! It's over. Can you imagine? We were that fast. 
Um, Sleepy, thank you for the 10 bits. Void, thank you for the 300 bits. Uh, Kyber, thank you for the 300 bits. Appreciate it. You guys are very sweet. Siri, thank you for the 100 bits. I'll see you at VidCon. I hope so. I'm going to VidCon England. UK. Uh, so if any of you are going, you can see me there. You, if you want to go and you want to meet me at the meet and greet, you're gonna have to sign up for the, uh, the meet and greet lottery. Because VidCon does that so people get a fair shot at it and it's kind of randomized and it's not like for first come first serve. Which I think is probably a better system. I know first come first serve rewards the really dedicated people. But from my experience going to PAX, it's also kind of a shit show because it caps out really fast and some people just can't get there early enough. So at least having a lottery is a bit more fair. Um, so that'll be fun. I hope to see some of you guys there. I We had said that we were going to go and then they didn't announce it for ages. And then there was like miscommunication where I think they thought we said that maybe we're going to go and then they were afraid to announce it. So I had talked to them and they were like, oh yeah, we just weren't sure if you were like dead set on it. So I was like, yes. <laughs> so that's why it only got announced today. But I had planned to go the entire time. But now, you can be in with a shot to meet me. Um, and I might be doing a panel there as well. I'm not sure what my schedule is for it yet, but there'll be a couple of things that I'm doing. But it's nice, because it's just in London, so... We don't have to travel that far. It's like an hour by train from Brighton. So I'm really excited. And maybe going to TwitchCon in Amsterdam this year, since it's in Gab's home country. That'll be fun. And I, I'm going to VidCon in LA as well. Well, I'm saying now I am, but who knows if something really important comes up that I really just can't say no to, um, then I'll be going to that instead. But for now, I should be going to VidCon in LA as well. Q&A right now? I did record the Q&A, by the way. I, I tweeted out like a week ago that I was going to do a personal Q&A and answer really personal questions. And I I did record it like three days ago, um, but I, ha I had like videos planned out ahead of time. So it just got edited for tomorrow. So it'll be coming out then. It's kind of long. It's like 41 minutes long, I think. But there was some... I mean, some of it is stuff that I've talked about before, but it's nice to just kind of reiterate some things. Because I think the reason for doing... Uh, a Q&A like that is... Regular Q&As are fine, but it's kind of the same questions over and over again, and it's it's kind of just answer however, but I think the more personal ones are getting into the stuff that we don't normally say. So I... <laughs> I think the video might sound a little more negative than it was supposed to, but it's just because these are the types of things that I don't normally discuss. Like... What, the inner workings of my brain and why I don't talk to my family and my darkest moments and shit like that, so... And like some of the more downer sides of doing YouTube in general or being a quote-unquote famous person. I don't know why I do that. <laughs> By all, like, technicalities, it I would be defined as a famous person, but whenever I say that, it makes it sound like I'm trying to be arrogant. But I, it, that, that is the reality of it. Um, but maybe some of your questions are in there. There are a couple of goofy questions in there as well, though, but... We'll see what happens. I like the video, anyway. The downside's gotta be said aloud, else they'll weigh you down. That's true. And since I haven't done reading comments videos as regularly anymore, I think it's important to do Q&A still and kind of be more transparent and open about things. Because there's a lot of stuff in the community that kind of got out of hand and people took every which way and now there's certain subsets doing certain things and it's... It's hard to address that shit if you're not doing Q&As or stuff that's a bit more like this where you sit down and actually chat with the community. You're not being arrogant. You were famous and you worked hard to get there. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. What is the actual definition for famous? Known about by many people. Well, 
I thought there'd be a more in-depth kind of description of it. That means so many people are famous then. Reading comments was, I think, the first series I've ever seen of yours, if I remember correctly. That's wild indeed, Jane. Um... Oh yeah, I got some numbers back from the, uh, merch, by the way, over the year. Cause we, we had been doing, we'd been giving away, uh, all of the merch proceeds to charity. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, fuck. It's in my email somewhere. Is it? Yeah. We, um... The total money raised for charity through merch alone last year was $416,000. Um... And then there was, there was some residuals that came to me from other aspects of it when we were doing merch outside of the, the charity year. Um, but I just pumped all of that back into the charities anyway. Like every month I was donating to the charity events anyway, so... Uh, apparently that was $200,000. So we've... Total on the merch, we've raised about $600,000. Just for the different charity events all cumulat cumulatively together. So that means since 20... 18 when we did some of those uh, charity streams that means we've raised close to four million dollars it's about 3.7 million which is fucking wild <laughs> thank you by the way that's fucking crazy appreciate it so all of that money is going to very good places Uh, Immortal, thank you for the hundred bits. And Ice, thank you for the thousand bits. Hello from Canada. Hello, Tim Horton land. I tried Tim Hortons once. It tasted like everywhere else. What's it? What is it that you get at Tim Hortons? A double double, or something? Or is that Wendy's? That's a Dave's double. Is that Wendy's? <laughs> is it a double double at Tim Hortons? Is that the place I'm thinking of? If I donate through streams, can I get a receipt for tax purposes? Uh, you should be able to. Uh, most charitable donations can be written off against tax, yeah. So as long- I mean, if you donated through Tiltify, they would have sent you an email. And you can just use that. Okay, that is Tim Hortons. Yeah. I was in Canada twice. And both times, I had a horrible experience at your airports. Double cream, double sugar. That's it. Um, I got caught at Canadian airports twice for like two hours each time. Just going through and the paperwork wasn't up to their standards, apparently. Um, going through and... Oh god, was that three times? No, no, a different one. That wasn't Canada. But I, I got caught there twice trying to go through. And they were like, uh, you need to have, you know how going through America you can have an ESTA? Which is like a visa waiver thing. Going through Canada apparently they have a completely different system. But I had been traveling through there to get home. So I wasn't even staying there, I wasn't even leaving the airport. I was waiting two hours for a flight. And I went through, and nobody at the check-in counter in America were like, Ah, you don't have this on the system. The thing told me that I didn't have it. And then they were just like, Yeah, whatever, we'll just send you on. And then when I got there, they were like, You don't have this, so I had to pay... $200? And get a form. Right then and there, and almost missed my flight home. But at least I got there. But that was once, and then another time I arrived, and they were like, Ha, huh, why are you here? And I was like, I'm doing a tour, I'm doing a live show here. Uh, just that, and then I'm leaving. Oh no. That could have been three times. Because I did just for laughs as well. 
And then I did just the two shows in Toronto. Such a pain in the ass. Either way, Canada is great, but your airports are very strict. Um, I thought I wasn't going to get into LA last time I went. Because I have like a visa, like a proper work visa when I did my tour. So I can come and go for a certain period of time, for a certain number of years. But every time I get there, it's completely different every time. There's no standardized, like, messaging. There's no standardized protocol. Every time you go to somebody, they look through it, and because I travel so much back and forth, it always looks sketchy to them. I'm like, I'm not a bad person. I just have a lot of work to do here because I work from home and it's YouTube and a lot of this stuff is here in LA. And then when I, <laughs> I get there, it's like some people are like, okay, one experience I had, I went to uh, an older Hispanic lady um, and she was asking a bunch of questions and she was like the officer there and she was looking through it and she wasn't happy with everything. She was asking a bunch of questions and what I did. And I was like, oh, I do YouTube, I make videos at home. She was like, oh, I think my kids might know you and blah, blah, blah. And then some other dude, another officer who was working customs came up, knew who I was and was like, oh, Jack accept the guy. Hey, this guy's great and blah, blah, blah. And then the lady was like, suddenly, oh, okay. And then she was like looking at me and she was, she, I, she said something. And then she was like, oh, if only I was a little younger or something and then looked me up and down. And I was like, that's fucking gross. Ha, ha, ha. Let me in, please. Um, and then the last time I went, the guy looked through it and he was like, ah, shaking his head every two seconds and looking through it and then going back and forward and back and forward and, oh, such a fucking mess. And I don't know if he was like, I'm not letting you in, you look sketchy. And then he was like, what do you do? And I said, YouTube. I make videos at home. He's like, what type of videos? Uh, gaming. He was like, yeah, whatever, and just stamped it. <laughs> It's a new world. People are still trying to catch up to it. I mean, I've been doing it for seven years. But YouTube's been around since... What? 2006? So it's about 13 years old? And people are still like, What is it? What do you do? Yeah, it was very... It was very creepy and very gross. And I was very uncomfortable. But I really just wanted the experience to end. So you know how you do that? <laughs> I remember this. <laughs> It might sound like I have a lot of uh, bad airport stories, but it's just because I travel a lot. So the, the weird stories kind of stick out. <laughs> it was not very cash money of her indeed. What is the Twitter personal Q&A video? I just talked about it, Razor. We're do it's going up tomorrow. Yeah, older generations, Camilla, can't really get it. I mean, I get that, but holding off on things. Well, the weird thing is that I had to get my visa. I've told this story before how I got my visa the morning I went to the airport, on my way to the airport for the first leg of tour. That was a, a bungling by the booking department for the tour and not getting the visa on time. Water under the bridge, but it was really stressful. But um, trying to get the visa, we had to expedite it and do all these crazy things to try and get it done very fast. So we hired some very powerful people to try and get the visa done as quick to get the visa done which if you know anything about visas is very quick but we had to get like the congressman of california involved to try and be like no he's fine i will vet him and allow him through and take the responsibility for it so we got this like really hyper strong visa and now everyone looks at it and goes i don't get it because my visa lasts longer than the passport my passport expires a year before the actual visa. So they all look at it weird being like, this this has to be fake, but it looks real. <laughs> She's a gross old lady. She did have a gross vibe about her. I'm gonna stream GTFO with the boys again. Uh, hopefully soon. Ah, uh, died again for a bit. Great, love it. I remember when that was happening. Even I was stressed. Yeah, it was it was a rough time. 
I thought I was going to have to cancel the first few shows because the the passport was being held in a facility near London. So on our way to the airport to get on the plane, I stopped off and got the passport, but I didn't know if the passport was there or had the visa in it. They assured me it did, but I got out and I was like, thank God. And then I was able to board my flight. <laughs> It's insane how crazy airports are. My only problem with airports is that there's no standardization for things. Every single airport, even in the same country, every airport there is completely different. It's just... It's kind of ridiculous. Some airports are worse, some airports are better. Like in... Some airports just get so much traffic through them that they can't change anything now because they'd have to shut down the whole place for like a week to even change anything. Um, whereas the lesser airports, the ones that get a lot of traffic but not too much to over overload it, can kind of shut down some sections and still operate. Um, like the Dublin airport, it's a very busy airport, but it was able to shut down certain sections and open up a new terminal and everything and now that is has great standards in it. You can go in and you can book in your bag and you can do it all yourself. And Gatwick for EasyJet has some really great stuff. You just go up and you can put on your bag and scan your passport and all that kind of stuff yourself easily. Amsterdam has a fucking great airport because they're security machines. You don't have to do the thing where it's like, okay, laptop out, bag on the... I've done so many airports now that I know exactly what I should be doing. Like, I know what needs to be taken out. I know what needs to be put in order. I know how many, like, little carriage trays I need. But in Amsterdam, you don't need to do any of that. You can just have everything in one bag, as bulky as you want, and put it on the thing and just shove it through. It doesn't even matter if you have liquids. You can just bring it on the plane because they have new uh, x-ray machines that they're able to just scan the whole thing regardless. So that, that airport is really, really fast. Which is your favorite cloak clothing? I think the joggers that we brought out are my favorites. The ones with the zippy pockets. I'm not wearing them right now. I am wearing two sets of cloak clothing right now. <laughs> um, but the joggers that we brought out last year with the zippy pockets are my favorite. They are so comfy. They're my favorite jogger pants that I've ever owned. I'm going to Amsterdam for TwitchCon. I'm glad it's easy. It's very easy. Amsterdam's great. Amsterdam has it down. It's a super busy city, but it could be so much more chaotic. But then again, the Dutch rail system is just phenomenal. Hi, Fox. Welcome. Any type of high security stuff gives me anxiety. Yeah, I used to get really nervous going through the custom stuff at the American border. Uh, in Ireland, it was great because on the way out of Dublin Airport, we have pre-customs I can't remember what they call it but you can go to customs there's like an American area underneath the airport that you go through before you actually get on the plane so you do pre-clearance for customs so when you get to America you just get off the plane and go so you know that before you go if you're clear to go or not whereas I saw Joey the anime man uh, went to America recently for a convention and when he landed they were like no nope. You're not allowed in, and he got declined, and he had to go all the way back to Japan again. And that used to be my fear, but I think I just have... I, I've, I've gotten so efficient at it now that it doesn't really make me nervous anymore. Because now I've, the fucking worst things have happened. I'm just like, okay, you gotta go over here. Cool, I'll just go downstairs and wait two hours, and the worst thing that's gonna happen is that I lose time. <laughs> uh, let me change the stream title. Favorite place you've traveled to? Um, maybe Japan. Japan or Korea were really cool. I went to Korea ages ago when I was dating a girl from there. Um, which, God, that... <sighs> That's so long ago now. Feels like a completely different person during that. <laughs> the title was fine. It was, actually. But I want people to know why we're not playing Bloodborne. 
Um, but Japan and Korea are just so different culture-wise and food-wise and everything to here that I think that those have a bit more of a, a draw to them, so to speak. It's a bit more exotic. Like, going to America is great, but it... Like, s stuff there is not that different, because it's still Western culture. Is it scary traveling alone? Um, no. It is when you travel first. It depends on how far you're going. I'd say if you're ever going to travel alone, do smaller trips first so you get accustomed to what an airport is like. Because when me and Evelyn go through the airports now, we know exactly where we're going, we know what to do, we've traveled so much separately and together now that... Like, we can get through security fast, we know our timings, we know how long it's going to take to get to certain places. All that kind of stuff, so all the anxiety of that is gone. Now when we go to airports, it's fun to see. We always, like, we can see who hasn't traveled that much before. Because they get to the security gate and they have, like, so many things in their bag. Or their bag is massive trying to get through security. Or they have all these things in their bags where you're like, That's- how did you think you were allowed to bring that through? But then you're like, I get it. You're- you're new here. Um... But... I I traveled to Korea on my own when I was younger. That was uh, that was actually the first trip I did alone. And that was a mistake. Cuz so many things could have gone wrong. I oh man, I was pretty sure when I was going to Korea that I was actually going to visit my girlfriend and not get catfished. But thinking about it now, I was very naive. Anything could have happened. And I I, like, I had to go through Germany and then on to Korea, and I, when I booked my hotel there, I had booked for, like, two weeks, and when I got there, I forgot that you lose a day going that direction. I didn't know that. That was my first time dealing with that aspect of traveling, and my hotel room was booked for the day before, because that's the day I left Ireland. And then when I got there, they were all having conversations. My girlfriend and the people behind the desk were talking about- talking in Korean about a bunch of shit. And my Korean was not good enough to know what was going on. And I got so nervous. And then she was like- She was withholding information from me. They just gave me a room and sat me in it. And then we went out for dinner and she got a phone call from the hotel. And it was like, okay, everything's fine. Because I had paid for two weeks, but I'd missed the check-in day. So usually they give away your room to somebody else because hotels need to- have a turnover period to constantly fill rooms because they lose hotels lose so much fucking money it's ridiculous but i got so nervous and i thought i was going to have to go home and i only had enough money to kind of like last the two weeks i didn't have enough money to pay for the room again uh i didn't get catfished by the way everything was great and everything worked out the room was there i spent the two weeks and had a great time but it was that was very scary. And on my way to Korea the second time on my own, I missed my flight out of Frankfurt. Or I, or I didn't miss it. I almost missed it. I was running around and... The thing to be aware of when you're traveling long distances is that time changes a lot when you're in the air. I was young and I was dumb. And I, I forgot about that the first time and then the second time. So when I arrived in Frankfurt, I forgot that it's an hour ahead of here. So I was looking at the clock, or I was looking at my watch, and I was like, okay, I have I have this amount of time to, like, explore the airport before my flight. And I was walking around, and I was just overhead, or in the overhead intercom, all I heard was, like, a bunch of names being called, and mine was in the middle of it. And it said, please board your flight now, it's leaving, or your bag will be offloaded. And I sprinted harder than I ever have with this big bag on my back, and I just made it to the plane in time. God, that was fucking scary. Everything worked out, everything was fine, but I was not... <laughs> I was not prepared for time zone changes and I was being very dumb. Uh, nowadays, I'm much, much, much better at it. I'm much more hyper aware of it, but God. Well, also, if things go wrong, I'm also in a position where I'm not going to get stranded and <laughs> run out of money and shit like that. Back then, I was broke. Young Jack was dumb. Yeah, naive. I would say, but... Yeah, not thinking very clearly. Pat the Dad, thank you for the tier 1 sub! And Land of Pines, thank you for the Prime. Uh... 
GC Nexus, thank you for the two months. Uh, Luna, thank you for the thousand bits. Uh, yeah, the merch company is still trying to get back to everybody about stuff. I know people had issues with the box being broken upon arrival. Uh, if you email them, they should be able to fix it and send out a new one. They're usually pretty good about that. People were saying that they were emailing them and getting, like, inbox full, uh, like, bouncing back to them. And I talked to them about that. And I thought it was just because they took some time off over the holidays and the, their inboxes got full, but they said that that's almost impossible to happen. That they can't, like their inbox wouldn't get full because they just have basically infinite in, or inbox space. So I don't know what that was. So hopefully it's fixed now and hopefully people are getting the things if stuff is damaged or anything. It's just, it's so much volume and doing a thing every month and only having to design to them a little bit before that. That's why it took so long for stuff to get shipped out because we weren't, we didn't have inventory for it. We were making them to the demand of how many people were buying them during the streams. So after like four months, that was fine. But after like six, eight, 12 months, it started to build up and all of this backlog of stuff was all kind of building up. So it got a little bit messy towards the end. And then for, it was like New Year's and then it was Chinese New Year's and all the, these different things were happening. So some stuff got delayed at the end of the year, but they're, they're back on track and they're trying to get stuff sent out. The, the Movember pin was supposed to be sent out earlier, but the factories took time off sooner than they were supposed to. And then that's why the thank miss pin then because they came back and they got everything ready to go and the thank miss pin was top of their list so they sent that out and then everyone was wondering why the november pin didn't get sent out but that's because they were sending it later that day they were just working backwards down the list so things should all be sent out now but the holidays kind of fucked everything into a coma <laughs> what's your merch site called it's just jacksepticeye.com we have new stuff now we have new designs. Hold on, I'll get some of it. So, we have new hoodies and shirts designs there's like a, a brand new like jacksepticeye logo design which is this which i absolutely love i think it's fantastic it's so minimalist it's so modern looking i think it's cool um i know it says jacksepticeye on it but i think if you didn't know who jacksepticeye was or if it didn't have jacksepticeye on it like those eyeballs on their own are really cool so i i really really like that i think it's a really great modernization of the logo for merch so you can go get those in jacksepticeye.com if you want right now. Merch plug. Ooh, ooh. Siren alert. Um, but I'm I'm very, very picky about merch designs. They keep coming to me with all these different things, and I'm always very hypercritical about them, being like, no, people aren't gonna like that. I don't like that. I wouldn't wear this, so I don't want it to be released. So that's why merch designs are kind of hard to refresh. Because I keep I keep like turning designs down. Because I just, I want it to be, like, really cool. I want it to actually be stuff that I would wear personally. Um, instead of just releasing stuff for the sake of trying to make money off of it. I mean, making money off the merch is one thing. Well, first of all, the PMA stuff and everything, we didn't make any money off. But that's fine, but I, I want to actually release cool stuff that people really like. But sometimes that's hard. Especially with something like a septic eye. It's hard to make that appealing. <laughs> Uh, but hopefully this year we'll be bringing out a lot more merch designs and kind of hunkering down on it a bit more. Um, we're also going to, we have long sleeve tees of that and the hoodie. Um, and some people online were saying they wanted short sleeves as well. So we're going to work on that as well. So I like it a lot. I'm glad, I'm glad you guys like it as well. Because that's the thing, is that I want to... I held off on designs and I'm like, no, I want people to really like it. So I'm glad that that is the case. 
Uh, oh, and we have beanies as well. But it also worked out well because it's the year 2020, 2020 vision. I have an eye logo. So this is the eye drop, the 2020 eye drop collection. But yeah, hopefully I'll have more as the years as the year goes on. I ideally I would love different merch every month. And I'm saying this by the way, you don't need to buy every single piece of merch. I'm just going to throw that out. I know YouTubers promote a lot of merch all the time. We promote a lot of products and stuff that we really care about and we're excited about and everything. And I know that as a fan, you really want to support everything we do. And that's that's really very incredibly sweet. But you don't need to buy everything. You don't need to buy every single piece of clothing, every single piece of merch, every single item. <laughs> I mean, it's great if stuff does well and we want it to do well, but I don't want anyone getting into a, like, financially bad position just because I release new shirts. Buy it because you really want it and you think it's cool and you can afford it, but don't... And Or if you want to support the people who are promoting the stuff, but if you're going to go broke, then don't buy it. <laughs> Look after yourself first. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping to release new stuff every month. I don't know if that'll go well or not, because again, I'm very picky about the designs. But I'd love to just have like a different type of collection every month, because the, the merch store is so stagnant at this point. Because we also have cloak stuff too. And we have to be mindful and conscious of like over promoting things. I don't want it to seem like I'm just promoting stuff all the time. But there is a lot of cool opportunities to do stuff. Like our own clothing company and then my own merch and then there's some other stuff this year that I'm I'm making that I'm so fucking excited about and I'm 110% behind. But I, I know it can be a lot from the outside. Just know I would never do stuff and never promote stuff unless I really was into it and really was behind it. What game am I excited about this year? Oh, so many. Have you guys seen the lineup of games? Video games 2020. It's... March, April, and May is going to kill us. <laughs> um, in March, we have... Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, and then we have Half-Life Alex. Which, hopefully I'll be able to do both. We have, uh, after that we have Cyberpunk 2077 coming out. In April. Let me just see. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake in March, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Neo 2, Animal Crossing, Doom Eternal, and Half-Life Alex. That's March. Then April, we have Resident Evil 3 Remake, and we have Cyberpunk 2077. In May, then, we have the Avengers game, and we have The Last of Us 2. All in the space of three months. All the best games of the year are coming out within a three-month period of each other. It's fucking wild. I'm very, very excited. Um, which ones am I going to stream or which ones am I going to play? That's a different story. Half-Life Alex, I I will probably likely do a full Let's Play on. Because I like doing VR stuff anyway, but a lot of VR stuff feels like one-offs all the time. It's hard to get an actual series out of VR stuff. Um, so Half-Life Alex, I will definitely do. Um, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, I don't know. I might stream that instead because the first game was fun, but it got a little repetitive and annoying in some parts, and it also just didn't really do that well. It doesn't really have huge appeal for YouTube audiences, so... But I still want to play it, so we might stream that one. Dying Light 2 comes out as well. I'm very excited about that. Uh, Doom Eternal I might stream. I don't think I'll do videos on that. Animal Crossing, I'm not that into. I'm not an Animal Crossing type of person, but I know how excited and how big a deal that is for other people. Final Fantasy VII Remake, I might actually do a Let's Play on that. Because it's such a big game, it's a big game for the year. I like doing Let's Plays. I'm getting a bit pickier about the Let's Plays that I'm doing. Have you noticed, by the way, on YouTube, how few long Let's Plays there are anymore? I feel like the last bastion sometimes 
of long let's plays. Like, Mark barely even does long let's plays anymore. He doesn't even really do series anymore. It's kind of just like one-off games. Because it's just, they don't get views anymore. No one watches longer let's plays because... I feel like YouTube kind of did to them what they did to the animation community. Not as severely. The animation community was like a 100% failure from their algorithm. But long let's plays are kind of just not really a thing that much anymore. You have to really pick the types of games to play. Kind of miss the days where you could just record anything because I like that. I like having like a game for a week and just recording that every day and just going on a journey together. Um... I can still do that, but it's it's just harder. So I'm tr I'm trying to like pick the really good ones and the ones that I'm really into as well. I don't want to just play anything for the sake of it. Yeah, it's a lot of older. Even John Wolf stopped long let's plays. Yeah, because they just don't do well. Um. But then Last of Us 2, obviously, everyone's going to do that. Everyone who doesn't even do long Let's Plays anymore are going to do that because it's such a big game. I'm very excited about that. Yours included. I'm going to be doing that too. I look upset. <laughs> God, I swear, anytime you show any sort of, like, bland face, any sort of, like, resting face, people are like, man, you look tired, you look upset, you look depressed. <laughs> I'm fine! <laughs> this is random, but my badge just disappeared for me. Can anyone see it? Um, I can see the septic guy next to your name. Usually if you go down into settings, you can pick how your stuff is seen. You can go to identity and click edit, and you can show what badges show up next to your name. Because I can turn off the verified badge and stuff, and sometimes it doesn't show up and sometimes it does. Will I play Resident Evil 3 Remake? Yep. I'll be doing that as well. It's gonna be hard because I don't know... Hopefully I can get each game done before the next one comes out. But it's also hard because there's so much back-to-back -back that if people really aren't into these games, then it's just gonna be that on the channel for ages, so I might... Uh, I might double up some days so I have something else for the people who don't want to watch like Final Fantasy or Last of Us, which, are you crazy? Why would you not want to watch those? Turquoise, thank you for the 100 bits. Any new games you're looking forward to? And when I say new, I mean new, not remakes or saga follow-ups. Ooh. Um, Ghost of Tsushima. Brand new IP from Sucker Punch, the people who made... Uh, Infamous, and what else did they make? Sly Cooper? Uh, I'm very much looking forward to that. That looks like a cool game. It's like a, it's kind of like a Sekiro type of game. I don't know what the gameplay is like to actually get my hands on it yet though. Very excited about that. 